to our show today. We're going to be talking about proper methods of recovering refrigerant from a low pressure centrifugal chiller. With me today to explain all this great stuff is our chiller supervisor, Matt Green. Matt, would you mind briefly going over kind of what this device is and exactly how it works? I see a lot of moving parts and pieces going on here. Yeah, thanks, Ron. This is a, a RevTech dual low pressure, high pressure recovery unit. Today we'll be using it on a, a low pressure uh, chiller recovering R123 refrigerant. Basically, we, we have a, a vacuum compressor that we'll use to transfer the refrigerant. Also has a, an optional air-cooled condenser as well as a, a water-cooled condenser. The great thing about this, this machine is prior to even starting your recovery, we can go ahead and just by uh, alternating the valves, we can evacuate our recovery cylinder, all our hoses, go ahead and get all our non-condensables out. Yeah, that's a great point, Matt. So, you know, we typically will be using small recovery machines, maybe recording, recovering 50 to 100 pounds of gas. How much gas in this machine, do you think? So th this machine holds approximately uh, 600 pounds of refrigerant. 600 pounds of refrigerant. So it takes yeah. a long time to get it out. Mm -hmm. If we were doing normal recovery, I mean, you're talking days, right? Yes. With so this guy, what do you think? If we were to start at uh, the beginning of the day, we could have it uh, out by the end of the day. Nice. Wow. Well, so, one day, get it out mm -hmm. of there. And that's cool. The benefits of it is we can do air cooled. So as we're running this compressor, it's getting hot because it's a pump and it's heating up on us. So we can yeah. either cool it down with this air cooled condenser here, or we can run that refrigerant across this uh, brace plate heat exchanger, mm -hmm. water and refrigerant. Is that correct? That is correct. Great. Yeah. That, that goes a little quicker mm -hmm. that way if you got nice cold water, I guess. Mm -hmm. Another important thing is to have this machine serviced prior to starting up. Yep. So there is a a desiccant dryer. Here's your compressor. We, you want to change the oil in your compressor. There, there's a, a, a drainage port underneath here that you drain that oil from. Also in your oil separator, there's a drainage port there. You, you have to drain that and, and that as well. Go ahead and, and fill your sump, you use the same oil that your chiller uses. So if this is a uh, POE chiller, then we would put POE oil in here. So this is a mineral based chiller, so we're using mineral oil. So once you got your, your new oil, your new filter, we go ahead and, and, and hook the machine up for a, a push-pull method where we push vapor in the machine and we pull the liquid out. So in that scenario, we go from our recovery machine we're pulling on the inlet side of the pump to the vapor side of our tank over here. And then from the vapor side of our tank, this hose here goes all the way back to our bottom, that liquid charging point on the, on the chiller. Uh, we've installed a, a clear hose here so we can monitor from when, when we, tra we transition from full liquid to a vapor. So once that transitions from vapor, we can change the configurator machine and, and go ahead and go to the vapor mode. So liquid refrigerant coming from the bottom of your evaporator back to the liquid heat machine. So as, as the pressure lowers in our tank, we're gonna be sucking that refrigerant through there and then we're discharging back through this hose to the top of our chiller. As that liquid is pouring down, we're actually uh, increasing the pressure above the liquid. So we're actually doing a push and a pull of that liquid at the same time. Yeah, that's a great explanation, Matt. So basically the vape refrigerant's living in two states in this machine. You got some vapor and some liquid and we're basically using this pump to push that vapor across the machine and force the liquid down into our recovery tank, correct? So we'll start stacking liquid up here until we eventually run out of liquid through your, through your hose and then we know it's just vapor. I'll tell you one other thing I really love that you said, Matt, is you know we're talking big equipment, expensive equipment, means big expensive tools. And if we're not doing our proper maintenance that you just went over, changing that dryer cord, changing that oil, and servicing this guy, which is doing all our hard work for us. Man, your whole job just went out the window. You show up and this doesn't work or it's been pro not properly maintained. That de is de definitely the heart of the start of the project. Absolutely, so. absolutely. Big tools, big money, you gotta take care of them for sure. Once all the liquid is out, we convert it to a, a, a vapor pool. We'll go ahead and isolate these valves. 
um, we'll go ahead and move this hose here from our outlet to our inlet and then we'll get a hose directly uh, from here, the liquid, to our liquid on our recovery cylinder. At that point we can go ahead and start our fan and start our water flow through our, our liquid cooled condenser. So once we get done with the push pull, we sort of go back to a regular recovery style. Yeah, so regular recovery style. There is a, a built-in vacuum switch. We'll we'll, we'll cut cut the machine off approximately uh, 600 microns. That is a nice feature that it turns off for you when it's got all the gas out. It, 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 it's a pressure switch. So so once once we're down to a deep vacuum, it'll it'll shut the machine off automatically. Now we know we're done recovering gas. And and it's the next steps. <laughs> and that, in that case, you, you always want to, once you've recovered your, your gas, you're in a deep vacuum. You don't want to open it up to the atmosphere directly. So you bring a, take a, a tank of nitrogen, raise that to, to zero PSI. Then you can go ahead and start breaking into your chiller. The water cooled is, is you know, a lot more efficient. You, you, can, you can actually, if you had additional chillers in the bu building, we could actually use chill water. We can, we can run it through that and really uh, lower that pressure. Uh, the lower the pressure, you, you, you can keep that uh, condensing. The, the more liquid you're gonna condense and, and your recovery time will, will go a lot faster. You can do, do, use domestic and, and run it down the, down the drain. The, the fan is a good option too, but when you, know, when you get, start getting into hotter months, it, it's, it's not gonna be able to keep up as, as well as the water cool. Great points, Matt. I mean, good description, everything on recovering gas and proper methods to prepare your equipment, make sure it's clean and if tanks are evacuated, everything's been serviced before you ever even turn the first bolt, right? Let's make sure we got our stuff together because you can just compound issues. So we're, uh, we're going to start pulling gas on this drain centrifugal chiller. Um, well, what we're going to do is do a tear down on it. We're going to pull the motor off, send it to the motor shop to have it rebuilt. And we're going to come back and do our next video on how we start rigging up all our equipment to do that process. Mr. Matt Green will be along with us on that as well, walking us through step by step on how we tear down a centrifugal chiller, send the motor off to be rebuilt, and then we're gonna rebuild the thing and get it all on video for you guys to watch. So, sure hope you guys keep tuning in. Be sure to subscribe and like our page, and uh, Matt and I will be back for the next go.